It's the Mike Francesa Podcast on the Bet Rivers Network. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the Mike Francesa Podcast. As always, it is brought to you exclusively by the good folks at Bet Rivers. Remember, go to the Bet Rivers app for all of your wagering needs. It is easy to use. It has tremendous, tremendous information and has a variety of things for you to uh, entertain you and to uh, handle all of your wagering needs. And remember, for uh, New York and New Jersey, it's Bet Rivers in Connecticut's play Sugar House. But remember, it is the Bet Rivers app that you want to go to. And that's where, remember, the Bet Rivers folks are the sponsors of the Mike Francesa podcast. Okay. I was driving along this morning when I got a uh, text, and the text said, check this out. And it was an announcement followed by a PGA announcement that the golf world had settled all its disputes. Surprised? I am surprised by the timing. No one heard an inkling of this coming. It has obviously rocked the world of golf. But does it surprise me? No. I have told you from the very beginning this was not working. I have told you from the very beginning it was hurting the PGA Tour. I had never watched one minute of LIV golf. I was not a consumer. But... I, like everyone I was speaking to, they have been watching less golf. The PGA Tour was taking a hit. You have to ask yourself, after being so adamant about this, why now? I think there's a couple of reasons. Number one, PGA Tour is not doing very well right now. The ratings on television are not good. Yes, Tiger Woods is gone. Yes, Phil Mickelson is gone. Now other stars are gone. It's less appealing product. That's a big factor. Number two, the Brooks Kepka performance in the Masters where he finished second and then finishing first in the PGA was a nightmare for the PGA. How could they have a Ryder Cup with Brooks in it under the current scenario, and how could they possibly not include on the U.S. team a man who has already won one major this year, been second in another, and we still have two more to play? How could he be excluded? And let's be honest, when Zach Johnson was asked, he didn't give an affirmative answer. He gave a terrible answer. Everyone said, what? And everyone was saying he has to play. The fans were overwhelming that he had to play. But let's be honest, not everybody's pleased today, especially the players who remained faithful. We'll get to them. Now, what happened here? Folks, what happened is the Live Tour, which was not doing well, so what? It was losing money. They can lose money forever. They got a bottomless pit of money. They just print it. They make money hand over fist, so money's not the issue. Now, the PGA Tour moved because of the reasons I just gave you. But what really happened is this. If eventually everybody's going to wind up... Now, this year, the schedule will stay the same, okay, for 2023. We know that. We don't know what happens to those tours in the future, but we do know that all the players who left the PGA Tour are going to return to the PGA Tour. That's logical in every way. And they've already been invited back. We just don't know under what scenario and what's going to happen to the live tour and what's going to happen to the other tours as far as how they fit into the PGA schedule. Now, but what really happened is this. You have a new world order. You also have a new business model. You have a now for profit LLC of which... The folks in the Middle East not only have a say, they have a major stake and really virtual control. Saudis now, whether you like it or not, own golf. Here's why. You have a 
new LLC, for profit LLC, of which the PGA Tour, yes, will have a majority stake, but the PIF, which is the body that bankrolled Liv and put $2 billion in it already, will not only have a stake in the new company, they will have tremendous power in the new company. Just listen to this. According to the new plan, the man who is the governor of Saudi's sovereign wealth fund, Yasser al Rumayan, will join the policy board of the PGA Tour, which will continue to operate the tournaments. He will be the chairman of the new commercial LLC with Monaghan as the CEO. The PIF will invest in the commercial venture. Yes, but listen to this. The PIF will be the exclusive investor in the new entity. Get it? It's all their money. And will have the exclusive right to further invest in the new enterprise and will have a right of first refusal on any capital investment, which means all future money that is put forth for anything in golf will come from the Saudis. That means they now own golf. Case closed. So when you look at it and say, well, if they're going to shut down live, what did they get? They got golf. They now are major stakeholders. They now own a big chunk, a big chunk. And let somebody tell us what the chunk is. Is it 60-40? Is it more than 60-40? They say the PGA Tour has majority stake, could be 51, 49 for all we know. Their guy is now the number two man in the PGA. And he's the bank. And as you know, in any sport, the bank rules. So now, for those of you who didn't like and really demonized Phil Mickelson and were mad at Dustin Johnson, Cameron Smith, Brooks, Kepka, and on and on. Well, if you're going to watch a golf tournament now, anywhere, anytime, on any level, the Saudis now are not only a part of it, they own it. And their stake will only get bigger because they can't go anywhere for money anymore except for them. And they're always going to be there as the bank because they have more money than everybody else. Why would you go borrow money for a capital improvement on the tour when you can turn around and get it from your buddies who print money every day? So this is the future of golf at night night sit with you well you might be very upset about it the bottom line is it is over the pga sold out there's no other way to say it everybody from any objective view felt that the live was not doing well the most severe critics thought the live was on the run. Well, it's only on the run in terms of appeal. It was never on the run financially because even if they lost their shirts, hey, they always have another shirt. And they always have the ability to turn the spigot on and make more money. So the bottom line is they, your partner is a bottomless pit of cash. And the Saudis have made it very clear. Their stake in the world is through sports. 
they've gone into tennis. I, they have their, excuse me, I should say more fairly, they have their eye on tennis. They have already gone into soccer in a big way. And now they have, for all intents and purposes, taken control of the world golf order. Are there unhappy PGA players today? Plenty of them. I don't know how many are going to be outwardly angry in their answers. I don't know how many will be critical because let's be honest, none of them have anywhere else to go. There's nowhere else to go. Now there's only one tour going forward in 2024. And all the litigation is stopped. I've already seen reaction and, and everyone, you know, so many people hate Greg Norman on a variety of levels and especially through this. But if you think Greg Norman lost, as I've seen people try to depict here, at the very end of that press conference this morning, he was mentioned. It was said, yes, we called Greg Norman. We called all our rights holders. So I don't know if Greg Norman now owns a piece of the PGA Tour, which might have sat very poorly with the PGA. They might have said, no, Greg Norman. And Saudi might have agreed to that. If they did, that means that Greg's parting gifts are going to be a ton of cash. Now, he's made a lot of cash in his life. He made a killing at Cobra Golf. He has a habit of making a ton of money. Well, he just made another big pile of it. If he sold out. If not, then he is a stakeholder in the new LLC. I doubt the PJ would agree to that. So I figure he got his parting gift, which was a lot of money. Now, obviously, it was a happy face from Phil Mickelson this morning because Phil was the big demon in all of this. He took the hit for all the guys who took the money. Brooks Kepka didn't get beat on. Phil did. Dustin Johnson didn't get beat on. Cameron Smith didn't get beat on. Phil did. Phil got beat on by everybody. But you know what? Phil came out on the strong end. I don't know how much of the 200 million Phil keeps. Maybe all. I don't know. I don't know how much of the 125 Dustin Johnson keeps or how much Kepka keeps. They signed five-year deals. They're not going to play five years in the live. I don't know what that means. I'm not worried about whether they get 10 cents, 20 cents, 50 cents, or 80 cents, or 100 cents on the dollar. It doesn't matter to me. They're all rich men anyway. The bottom line is they all came out on top. The guys who went to live didn't lose anything. And the guys in the top 20 in golf who stayed and were loyal to the PGA got it in the back from the PGA. They got nothing for their loyalty. The Rory McIlroy's of the world who could have taken a ton of money got nothing for their loyalty. Nothing. They can't be happy today. They got to go forward but they could have taken $100 million and come back and gone forward too. Brooks Kepa got $125 million, and he's already got a major and a second this year, and he'll be on the Ryder Cup team. What did he lose? Absolutely nothing. So those guys are the big winners. And the guys on the PGA Tour who could have taken the cash and come back, even though they were told they would never be allowed to come back, you know what? It turned out to be a complete lie because the PGA bailed. If the PJ was doing great, they wouldn't have bailed. They bailed because the price was right. The Saudis go on the premise that everybody has a price, and they're right. Nine or even 99 out of 100 entities or folks do have a price. And they find the price because they can pay any price. They've already put $2 billion in to live. They now have what they wanted. They have ownership of golf. How long will it be before there's a major in Dubai? Not every year, but 
on a rotating basis. Other big tournaments in Dubai, I'm sure that will be a big part of this whole premise or throughout the Middle East. They got what they wanted. They wanted the sport and they purchased it. They challenged it. They pirated away players. They threatened legal action. And then they bought the whole thing. Because go back to what I said. The PGA is starting a new LLC. They are no longer a nonprofit entity. Now, you know, these leagues set this stuff up as a gimmick, but they get away with it where they are the C6 charities. And the bottom line is these guys not only got leadership, the PIF will be the exclusive investor in the new corporation and will have the exclusive right to further invest in the new enterprise, including a right of first refusal on any capital invested. The PGA will remain a 501C, yes, so that they can go into a town and give money as they have through the years to charities in those towns and remain a tax exempt organization in terms of their oversight of sanctioning events. That's what the 501C is for. The 501C6, that's what it does. But everything else, TV, money, anything else, anything they make money on, image, likeness, anything, anything they make any profit on, will be inside the new LLC, which is yet to be named, of which Monaghan will be the CEO and Al Ramayan will be the chairman of the board and the banker. So now they are pro partners, but one partner has all the cash. Always, always look to that partner. So, is this a good thing for the fan? Let's look at it from the fan for a second. I think it is from this standpoint. You got all the players back together again. That's what you want because that's what you do. You watch the tournaments. What else do you care about? You're not worried about the other stuff. It doesn't impact you. Now, if you don't like the fact that they're doing business with Saudi, with the Saudis, well, there's 400 American corporations that do business on a daily basis with the Saudis. So I don't know if you deal with too many companies that don't. Um, but they now have a enormous say at the table and they have the right to bankroll the entire new enterprise. So they own golf going forward. So I think it helps golf from a standpoint of being a fan. I think the product gets back to being what it was. You got all the great golfers all in one place. Again, you don't have the craziness you've had. The PGA tour was lacking without Phil Mickelson, without Dustin Johnson, without Brooks Kepka, without all the guys who went to live. It was, it was hurting. Was live doing well? No, live wasn't doing well. It was hurting too. We need them all in one place. That's golf. Sports are about the players who are playing at that moment. They are the product. And now you have them all back together. So that's a positive from the fan standpoint. But if you are one of the guys who took the live big money, a star who took the live money, you hit a home run. If you were one of the guys who stayed behind and was loyal, you got stuck in the back. That's the facts. If you're Monaghan, you've been talking out of both sides of your mouth. You talk tough and then you caved. You took the money. You blinked and you took the money. 
You can't say it any other way. You can try and spin it. You can try and do whatever you want. That's what happened. But here's the fact now going forward. They own golf. Will it affect you? Probably not as a fan. It shouldn't. You'll still have the Masters. You'll still have the U.S. Open. You'll still have the Majors. You'll still have the Ryder Cup every two years. You'll still have good tournaments. That's all you should care about. But golf has changed. There's no question about that. We don't have all the answers to how this is going to unfold in 2024 yet. We'll get them. But know this. The players who went to live will be back. They'll all be on the one umbrella. And now, Saudis have made a major stake in the game of golf. They now own it. We'll see you down the road. Thanks for listening to the Mike Francesa podcast on the Bet Rivers Network.